young world what is up young world listen it's been kind of you know scarce with the save on legendary podcast but just hold your horses keep your bras and panties in order and you'll see why soon but today i have a very very special guest he's been wanting to get on this i've been wanting to have him on <laughs> what's up man <laughs> it's been a long road but we made it listen nigga we made it. <laughs> what's going on with you my guy how much man chilling you know what i'm saying taking it easy you know what i mean i see you got the subpoena trap files entertainment logo in the back yeah, yeah, it's 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 in reverse, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to fix it, but I couldn't no, get it. No, right. no, it, it, it reads right. It reads right. Yeah. It's yeah. probably reversed to you, but it reads right. Fourth Ward, self-made, boss moves. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's the brand, man, Trap Files Entertainment. Oh, I yes, thought, sir. I thought you was getting low for all the ladies that like a baldy. I thought you was getting low to show the ladies, you know what I mean? Yeah, bald <laughs> hair still in style for the ladies, you know. You know bald hair still in style. You, you on your two pocket lips, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get let's let's get into it, man. You know we don't got all night, but man, I definitely want the people to learn a lot more about subpoena. So listen, man, me and you go back a little while now, man. I didn't see many performances from you. We didn't had off the record phone conversations and all types of stuff, man. Tell the people who subpoena is and how the hell subpoena even get into music, let alone hip hop. What are we talking about? Man, subpoena. Subpoena is a real, a real person, a real nigga. Like, you know, a, a, a regular person like anybody else who got problems like everybody else, you know. Um, you know, I, I came up, you know, from from the bottom, like a lot of people in this industry, you know, and and it it, it fuels what what I what I talk about. You know what I mean? Um, shoot, mom left me when I was let a boyfriend put me out when I was 13 years old and, and mom and brother and minute, family minute, disappeared, minute, 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 family minute. disappeared, you know, and I ain't know where mom was for 10 years. You know what I mean? So, and, and that's where the struggle began. Yeah. Yeah. Mom. You know what? I hear a lot of stories about women lead a kid to grandma or kick him out or just don't feel like they want to raise them at that point in time in their life. And they mm -hmm. do something with their kid, where they kick them out, whether it's foster care, whether it's grandparents, whether it's aunts and uncle. Yeah. I don't want to dive too deep this early, but this ain't no regular podcast. We're going to get to know subpoena denied. Now, why? Yeah, you're yeah, you the king of hard questions. <laughs> you weren't supposed to reveal <laughs> that just yet. <laughs> you must let find out all of you that ain't seen the podcast okay so no but no but watch this I know what it's like growing up in a single parent home but when you're kicked out at 13 what did that looking back because hindsight always 2020 how do you think it affected you moving forward people always say you talk about like you know what would they change if they could go back? Like I don't think I would change a lot of stuff because it made me strong. Mm. I like the, I like the strength I have. I like the appreciation I have for the things I got because you know I take care of my things differently. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, I got I got property I don't have for years because just that level of appreciation because you ain't never had nothing and I want nice mm. things so I work hard. I work hard to get nice things. You know what I'm saying? I want nice things. You know because I ain't never had nothing. You know what I mean? So that that and and that really showed me how how real the world is. The world ain't no fairy tale. It's it's horrific. It's hard. It's cruel. It's dirty. You know what I'm saying? And and what's fucked up is I like it. You oh, know I like it. it. I was able to handle it. I was able to adapt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was able to make it my bitch. Can, can I cuss on this podcast? I'm sorry. No, no. Listen, listen. Live it how you speak it, how you live it, how you speak it. I mean, yeah. I, I agree that life is hard. And I agree that life is gritty. And I agree that life is dirty. And I believe all of us have a, have a story. And if we all sat in the room and got an opportunity to tell our whole story, we would find out that we got more in common than we have differences. 
right? No doubt. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people, men that look like you and I, came from almost impossible odds and situations. We really did. And when you say if you could go back and change nothing or something, that you would change nothing, that resonates with me. But the reasoning resonates with me because you said it made you strong. And in this world, you need some strength, some individual strength, or you or you go curl up in a ball. Yeah. So, you know, um, my, fam my, my family disappeared for 10 years. For 10 years, I was out here in these streets by myself. I was I was homeless, literally, from 16 to 19, homeless, sleeping in the park, riding the motor train in the ATL, have somewhere to sleep, you know what I'm saying, surviving. You know, thought about suicide a couple times because um, you, you just feel like you wasn't meant to be here. But, you know, I, I realized, that, you know, mom came back at some point and family reunited, and, and I, I had this thing, this chip on my shoulder, like I felt like, you know, the world owed me something. But, you know, in order for me to grow, I had to realize the world didn't owe me nothing. And, and life was based on how I wanted it to be. And it could be however I wanted to be. If I want to be as rich as I want to be, I could do that. If I want to be as poor as I want to be, then, you know, it could be like that. So, you know, um, I got the chip off my shoulder. I started to grow. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, mom, eventually she came back after 10 years. I had been forgave her. Because, you know, I think forgiveness is important. It's an important part of growth also. You know, God said, if you can't forgive, he can't forgive you. So, mm. you know, I forgave him. And, um, you know, Jesus said, you know, reward in loving those that love you. The, re the reward is in loving those that don't. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I have nothing but love. And, you know, um, that and, and, and all those kind of things I live by. And, and they make me who I am as a person, which, which affect who I am as an artist. Because, you know what I'm saying? When I make my music, I make real shit. You know what I'm saying? Real music. Some of it's gangster music. Some of it's, you know, real life. Some of it's, you know, you might call gospel rap, but, you know, just able to come at the mic from all walks of life. You know what I'm saying? Because, and I think that's important because there are all kind of different people out here. Everybody ain't thugs. Everybody ain't in a trap. You know what I'm saying? Some people out here depressed. Some people think about suicide every day. You got to talk to those people too. So, you know, I think... Going through all that made me who I am and gave me the ability to be the artist that I, that I am where I can deliver like that. Wow. So you mentioned suicide and feelings of that. You know, believe it or not, and this is not necessarily for you, but to these viewers, I can relate. Let's let's just say that I can relate, right? Now, going through what you went through, your family not there for ten years, your mom like that's that's what made you say, "I can beat this feeling. I can beat this situation. I can beat it." What gave you the strength, like the inner, to get back to get up that morning when you ain't feel like getting up? and go forward and change your situation. What was your motivating factor? I just had this, this, this thought that I didn't want to be invisible. You know, I wanted to matter. I wanted to matter. Wow. I didn't want to be invisible, you know? And then, I, and then that's when I realized, you know, it's up to me how much I matter, how visible I am. Wow. So, you know, I took my, situation my life into my own hands and and took the responsibility of it serious and, and got my shit together you know what i'm saying see we getting see we getting heavy early subpoena and i knew it because you're an intelligent <laughs> guy you're a smart motherfucker so you ain't no way this, people gonna turn they gonna be like i don't know whether to cry or have a drink i'll tell you what damn it so you know and, and you know, I, um, outside of of music, the profession I in, I'm in, it allows me to give back to my community. And um, you, you know, I, I, well, you know, yeah, I'm a, um, outside of music, I'm a professional EMT. You know, I've been a, a emergency medical uh, technician for like 15 years. I did 911 rescue on the ambulance for about 
uh, 10 to 15 years. I done delivered over 10 babies in the middle of the street. I delivered my own son. You know, I done brought people back to life along with my team. Um, I currently work in the ER now. And, you know, I deal with the homeless every day. And I talk to these people and I tell my story every day. You know what I'm saying? And if my, if my, if my music career reflected my professional career and, and the reputation I have in the ER and in my community, I'd be like double platinum. You know what I'm saying? So, I'd be like so, double platinum. So, okay. Okay. You, you, God, you, you, listen, you're moving fast. Now listen. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for you, son. I, you know I, what I'm saying? I, I ain't come to start no trouble, though. I don't want no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. First of all, thank you for your service as an EMT. And to y'all listening, that, that shit don't apply just to the military. And you can't tell me nothing about nobody on watching this can tell me shit about the military. My entire family, mother, father, sister, uncles, everybody military, except me. But Thank you for your service, Safina, because it sounds like you doing a whole lot more good than some of your records paint the narrative. <laughs> We're gonna get into that later too. I was like, We're gonna get off the hook. But but I will say I think that's awesome analogy where you like as a medical professional, I'm double platinum. That's fire. Do you understand? Like that's grown man, grown grown person shit. That nigga said I'm double platinum in real life. That's fire. Now, speaking of fire, ooh, see that segue? <laughs> speaking of fire, this single we got. Yeah. Talk to me about it. Which one we talking about? Uh, Hustle for mine, dope boy lifestyle. Dope boy lifestyle. Dope boy lifestyle. The most recent one. Yes. Yeah. I just released that. Just released that. Uh, April. Um, you know, it, it's it's getting a lot of nice feedback. The DJ's feeling it. The streets feeling it. You know, you feeling it. My people's feeling it, and you know, what I'm saying feel good, and I'm pushing it hard. You know, we got the video coming soon, and um. We working. I well, I got I just dropped a video for Hustle for Mine. That's another single I just dropped mm -hmm. along with Dope Boy Lifestyle. So that video is streaming on all platforms. Both singles streaming on all platforms. Uh, getting ready to do that video. Also got another video coming up uh, to another single that's streaming. Rich Life. We we, we working. You know what I'm saying? We working. Um, I'm a, Dope Boy I'm Lifestyle. A, I'm not bad. I mean, so just real quick for the people that don't ain't heard these records, I'm gonna drop a link for both of those singles in the description. So go down there, click on it, and check them out. And let me tell you something. The boy hard, but he got bars, and he got energy. Now, we've had this conversation before about, about your lane that you choose to be in the music. Mm -hmm. And for those who haven't heard it, it's a real gritty, street, hard, with his story type of records. He's telling who he is, what he experienced, and what he cares to share with y'all. But he's doing it in a hard, high caliber, high energy way. And what makes you do street level, hard, gritty music that people can still listen to and appreciate the musicianship in that shit? What makes you do that type? It's a couple of things, you know what I'm saying? Cause first, first I lived that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't live it now. So I don't care what nobody think. You ain't gotta be living that shit to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? But I lived it. So you try to make money off music. That's silly. But go ahead. Yeah. Right. I, I got this one of the only genres of music where you have to be actually doing what you're talking about to be successful. But uh, you know, I, I actually did it. You know, it, it ain't nothing I'm proud of. I don't be bragging, but I am trying to tell my story. So it's dope that you recognize that. Um, and you know, I, I lived that life too. When 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 me and my partners were young, man, we was we was over there. And when Atlanta, when all the projects was up, you know, 
this this Atlanta is like Martha's Vineyard compared to the old Atlanta. We was doing like five kilos a week. Oh. We was we was we was cooking up all week. So I mean, allegedly, allegedly, you know, you there was know people that I that. that I heard that I heard was doing things, you know, and I knew, the, but that was a long, 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 long time oh, ago. Like long like, time like, ago, like statute of limitations long. Yeah, it, it's you know, I, yeah. some of those folks dead in nursing homes. They 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 probably don't even know they're alive now, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It happened. And and you know, I and I am telling my story, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I and you know, I make music. I make the kind of music I like to listen to. You know, I, I like I like real shit. I like gangster music. I like the shit. But at the same time, um, I like to switch it up. So that that's where that come from. That's where that come from. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? You you in the streets, you pushing this music, you gotta go hard. You know what I'm saying? You know, this, you know, it's savage out here. You know what I'm saying? So I go savage on the track. I mean, I love what you're saying about telling your story, regardless of who I tell artists. But 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 but, for, but I don't mean to cut you off. I don't mean to yeah. cut you off. But, but I want to add one more thing to that component. Yeah. You know, with me, music is about. It's not about. You know, what I'm saying. Uh, here's my music. I hope you like it. Music with me is, nigga. This is what I'm about. You know, what I'm saying. You like it or not, but this is what it is. So you know, what I'm saying. I made my own lane, and I own my lane. You know, what I'm saying. So you know, either, either you love it or you don't. That's the, the beauty of music. You. Everybody ain't gonna like you. Everybody don't like God. So it makes you think everybody gonna like you. So you know what I'm saying? I Let present what I got. Find... And if you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. Let me find out you're a part-time pastor. Let me let me pass a Don't get me to preaching. Please, please, please. That's another, that's another podcast. That's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend subpoena. <The> Reverend. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, and you do do a good job of switching up. But this is what I tell artists all the time. We need, and I say we, consumers of music, we need artists to be who they are and tell their story because that is the one story we definitely don't know is yours because only you lived it, only you know it, only you could tell it. So though I think there's, if you have certain goals in music, for instance, you want to be on the billboard charts or you want to be heavy on radio, or you want to be heavy in strip clubs, or you want to, there's a way to be who you are and still approach it in a strip club way or a radio way or a billboard charting way without compromising who you are. But the core to that is the way to get ahead is be who you are and be who you are unapologetically. And that's what you do a great job of. Now we bought- I appreciate that. Bit. Tell the people how you even got on the Save On Legendary Pod. How the how the hell you get here? How the hell you get here? You ain't drive because we on Zoom, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, first off, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, if you own Save On Podcast or you got Save On in your circle, just know you're making the right moves, you're doing the right things. But um, grinding, I lounge, Atlanta, every Wednesday, you know what I'm saying? Performing, you know. You got these contests. You go through these bouts. And at the end of every month, you got this championship. You win $500. You come in first place. You get to meet Savon on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? You might meet him in person. But, you know, that's how I arrived here. But mm. it wasn't easy. It was failure after failure after failure. You know what I'm saying? Mm. After failure. And, and and that didn't bother me because I like to fail. You mm. know, I, I I read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and, and, and it taught me that failure leads to success. Yeah. You know, and I and then I started to see it in everything around me, like the Atlanta Braves. You know, they lost 28 seasons until one day they became World Series champions. All it takes is one song, three and a half minutes, man. You know what I'm saying? And 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 that's how I got here. Failing, continuing, persevering, grinding. You know what I'm saying? With this dope music. With this dope music. That is a word, man. I, you, you, where, 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 where's uh, where O at, man? Where Omar at? Uh, Reverend Lapina. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he get you a robe to wear or something. <laughs> Listen, that is a word, and and I'll tell you what, to all the aspiring artists, create, not even creatives, anyone who aspires to level up in their life, 
you have to understand that you don't need a thousand yeses. You need one. And you necessarily don't need that one yes from, from someone else. Sometimes that yes needs to come from you, a commitment mm -hmm. to excellence and to work ethic. Sometimes that one yes come from you. See, especially as creators, we always are looking, and I know because I can relate, we're always looking for somebody to validate us. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're dealing with the right people. Successful people gravitate towards two types of people. Successful people and people that are working their ass off to be successful. It's saying in the Bible, God helped those who helped themselves. And you have zero problem putting in the work. And once you get used to the work and working, success will catch up with you. It will. That's the way it works. The only way to fail is to quit. That's why I tell everybody, you fail, you're guaranteed to lose. I mean, if you quit, you're guaranteed to lose. That's it. If you keep going, you will win. It might take a week. Might take a year. Might take 20 years. Might take 30 years. You know where Steve Harvey was. You know where Oprah was. You know where Bill Gates was. You know where Warren Buffett was. Yeah. Warren Buffett was 47 before he made his first money. Yeah. It's, it's so crazy. So shout out to Deanna. Shout out to Omar. I lounge. Shout out. If you're in Arkansas and you're in Atlanta or the surrounding area, meet us at I lounge on Wednesdays. If you're serious about your craft, go there. You're going to run into some nice people. You're going to run into people that can help you, like myself. You get to compete. You get to win money. You get to win K100 radio interviews, Hot 365 interviews, Stay Vaughn's legendary podcast, and a host of other things. And at the end of the year, you win, if you win, you win $1,000. Plus quadruple all of that. Shout out to Dem uh, Demello. So, now listen. Hustle for my. I hustle for my. I hustle for I hustle my. For my. Yeah. All day stacking that cash. All tell day stacking that cash. Tell me about that record. I, um, I got that track from my people's Quality Hurts Gang. You know, they are... Re we Shout connected on Instagram. They, you know, they like what I was doing and they just started sending me tracks. And, you know, I, I came across that track and they're like, oh, I had to do this. And and it just, the, the hook, you know, you hear one of them tracks that just really hit you and the hook just come naturally. You know what I'm saying? You just hear what the beat saying to you. It was like that. And, and you know, and, you know, I put the verses on there, you know, and, and I like to take my time writing my verses because I, I don't like to say stupid shit. Or I, I want to give the people something, some content. So. Yeah, you know, I put that put that together, and, and it came together nicely. At first, nice. I had the song on the back burner. I wasn't even thinking about the song. Mm. You know, I was I was into uh body bag, you know, pushing, you know, that that kind of stuff. But my brother, my brother, he got all my stuff, man. He's my biggest fan. He tell me all the time, "Don't stop." He one of the reasons why I started back. Mm. Um, shouts out to my brother, uh, you know, Rude Boy One Eighty Seven. Uh, you know, and uh, he um. He said, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You need to put that hustle for mine. That hustle for mine to hit. Mm. You, know? you know, it stuck with me. And, and I decided to, you know, hit the streets with it. And people responded. You yeah. know, and, yeah. It's catchy as hell. Yeah. It's catchy as hell. It's catchy. Yeah. And the link for that going to be, well, uh, once again, that link for that record going to be below. Uh, click on that. Check it it's out. Like I got two questions of the day. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, you thought you was the only one ready? You thought you was the only one ready. First question: Are you ready, subpoena? I'm ready, Reverend Subpoena. I think I'm ready. <laughs> if you could choose, excuse me, any gospel artist to do to feature on a subpoena record, what gospel artist would that be? Um, Ooh what's the, Mar Mario Winings? Is that his name? Get it. Uh, no, no, <laughs> that is not a gospel artist. Shout That's not a gospel. Mario, shout out to Mario Winings. He's on the record with me in case called I can't. 
but no, Mario Wines is from a gospel family, but he is definitely not a gospel artist. Shirley, Se Shirley Caesar. Oh my God, you went that, straight from, oh my God. Is that too much? Is that too much? Is she still alive? I'm sorry. Yeah. If um, she was, if she's still here with us, I would love to do a song with her. Shirley Caesar? Yeah, she oh dope. Oh my God. I love me some Shirley Caesar. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, Trap Files Entertainment CEO just went from a complete secular artist. And when I say secular, I look up Mario Wines. It's secular as hell. To a whole legend in Shirley Caesar. That I would, oh my God. I, will, I want her. Can I be on the record too? I want to be on that record too. Yeah, 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 definitely. You get the intro. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the intro. Uh, start it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all gonna have robes on in the video. Uh, second question of the day is: You could go back to twenty-one-year-old Sabrina, knowing what you know up until this moment. <laughs> what would you tell that man? What would you give him? One piece of advice, like a ghost. You enter his life, and you say, "Look, I'm from the future, nigga. I got." Seven seconds. One piece of advice. What would that advice be? Take your ass back to school. Hmm. Don't stop. Ass. Don't stop. No matter how much you fail, do the hard shit, the hard stuff. Like that seven, what, seven minutes? Like, what, if it's hard, do it. You want to do all the hard stuff. Don't be scared to work hard. Take your ass to school. Don't drop out. Keep mm -hmm. going to school. Because I went back, because I went back to school. And that's what helped me change everything. I got, you know, I had the record deal, the little money I had left from the deal when it ended. You know, I, I put myself in the um, online school, high, uh, online uh, homeschool. Mm -hmm. And I got my high school diploma with all of those Southern accreditations. Mm -hmm. And then I put myself through college and that's how I got my EMT. But, you know, I had to, to tell people like, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Like sometimes you got to conform to the system a little bit to get, Give them what they want, and then you can get what you need, and then you do what you want. You know what I'm saying? That is a great point, man. You got you you. I, I is this a subpoena podcast? You 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 dropping all the same bond gems, man. You ain't got no jewelry left. You keep dropping gems. Hold on, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'm just being honest. I appreciate that. Wow, 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 wow. Now, touch just a little bit because we ain't got a whole lot. Touch a little bit on that record deal you just mentioned. I know we, you and I talked about that for before the people. How did that tell them how you got to the record deal and kind of what happened with it? I was working at the seafood restaurant called Raheem Seafood right here uh, uh, on the west side. Everybody come in there, the mayor, goody mob, outcast, you know, ludicrous when he was just uh, Chris Lover Lover at 94.5, you know, I'm making the fish dinners and all that. I had the song called Feds on my back. You know, a cat heard it, he liked it. Decided to give me a record deal. These cats out of Miami. They had this uh, label out here in uh, Marietta. So I had the record deal for four years. Traveled all over the United States, like four years over. Uh, uh, opened up for uh, Maze at the Miami Arena. Opened up for Cash Money. You know what I'm saying? Opened up a bunch of times at the Daytona Spring Break. Uh, DJ Cool when he was hot at that time. All that shit. And um, and uh, um, um, that's how I had the record deal. That's how. You know, and, and during that time, I got I made a little money, but I was young. You know what I'm saying, and and blew the money like all, like we all do when we're young, stupid. Oh. We don't understand. So yeah, <clears throat> the record deal was like four years. Uh, traveled all over, went to Vegas. You know, until Mike Tyson lost the title. The, the first time I went to the Vegas with the record label, uh, Mike Tyson knocked the dude out so fast we all gonna miss the fight. And then coming out of the fight, we were watching Tupac and Suge Knight jump on the dude right there in the lobby. And we watched Tupac and Suge Knight run out the lobby after they done stomped the dude out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stomped them sleep. And they ran out the lobby. Oh. And then two hours later, you, you hear in the casino, you know, Tupac dead. Allegedly. Oh, no, not, not he did. He got shot. You, you hear he, that he got shot. But were you there for sure or were you allegedly there? I was standing. I was allegedly there. I was okay. allegedly I was okay. That's what they had said. Okay. That's what they said. <laughs> That's what they had said. Okay, we running out of time. Subpoena, <laughs> subpoena. We so we, we do a whole no. We a new episode. Listen, listen. 
If you like what you're hearing, click the subscribe, click the thumbs up. Please comment, comment, comment on this youngster, man. Not 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 youngster, this grown man. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to so many youngsters. Listen, comment, comment, comment. Let let them let y'all let them know what good he doing. Being an EMT and all of his experiences. Let's support this man. Build him up, man. Women, my 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 fellas, man. Let's build this man up. He trying to do the right thing. He is doing the right thing, and he do it. He getting his story off through his music. And man, listen, we are gonna see you again. We are gonna hear from you again. I'm putting your links below. Support this man. Stream his music. Stream his music and share his music. Now, subpoena. But we get cut off here. Thank you for your time, brother. I really, really, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Speak to me in the Save On Legendary podcast. Is there any parting words you want to tell the world? Yeah, man. You know, um. I want to also say it was a pleasure to be here. You know what I'm saying? It was dope to, um, you know, experience this interview, which, you know, you know, me and you, yeah, we'll be talking all night long if we <laughs> get us the podcast. But, um, yeah, I want to tell everybody out there, like, no matter how much you fail, you know what I'm saying? Keep going. Failure leads to success. Losers quit when they fail. You know I mean, I want to give shots out to everybody that showed me love. I Lounge, uh, Sound Capsule, Quiz, OG Dre, uh, DeMello, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, King Man, my boy Ball Man, Ball Man, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Ray Daniels in the morning show, Shot Shot in the midday, you know what I'm saying? Hits on five DJs, you know, DJ Chill Wheel, 94.4 FM Valdosta, you know what I'm saying? K100, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that showed me love, uh, P Brown, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chit Chat. To uh, ugly money, you know what I'm saying? Everybody out there who's doing their thing, I want you to keep doing your thing. Definitely shouts out to HHF, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh Money Mail, you know what I'm saying? Showing me love, uh, my boy King Ditto, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Mr. Shine over there, uh, Murder Man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody, Trill, uh, um, Knox Bun, you know what I'm saying? Golden Money Marketing Team. Everybody who fuck with subpoena, you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to you. You know what I'm saying? If you tune, if you fuck with me, tune in. Is and there like, anybody else? Like, like uh, uh, Barack Obama? My man DJ Brad. Uh, my man DJ Brad. Uh, uh, Michelle Obama. Uh, uh, Barack Obama. You know, uh, the, uh, the mayor of Atlanta. Uh, Thank Keisha, you. Keisha, 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 Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and Mr. Joe always- Biden. It's, it's always love, Sabita, man. You know, you know you my man, so I appreciate it. And to the rest of the you listeners and viewers, as always, peace, young world. You ready? You ain't ready. Ready for say ready. You ain't ready. Ready for say ready.